Good afternoon, ladies and gents, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Steve, and you're watching Bush. You're watching Bushcraft. You're watching. Oh, Bushcraft with Steve outdoors. <laughs> First of all, ladies and gents, I'd like to apologise for the lighting conditions today. The sun is doing all sorts of crazy stuff in the sky. The woodlands are bare and I'm going to have to watch out for that glistening nose today, so... <laughs> and now on to today's video guys, and I'm excited about this one because I've recently just purchased myself a brand new, second hand, used, almost new, bushcraft pack to see me throughout the spring months in the woodland. And I like it that much, it's probably going to follow me into the summer and beyond, so let's take a look. Now guys and girls, my current rook for generalised bushcraft, I'm bringing gear out into the woods to review for you guys to see has been the Carrymore SF Sabre 45 military rook. Now I've owned the Sabre for a good 14 going on 15 years now and in that many years it has not lost a stitch. The pack is absolutely bomb proof and it is very very popular in the bushcraft community. But as my skill set has advanced and my tastes have matured over time, recently I've been looking for a less complicated pack to take out into a woodland setting. So my current lineup of rucks allow me to camp in the winter months with my heaviest gear using the Savota Jacari L. And then we can go into the summer with the Frost River IRL, which is a canvas pack. But recently I've been looking for a new lighter pack that will allow me to transition between the winter months and the summer months. So ladies and gents, let me introduce you to my new spring pack, the Savota Saddleback 339. Now for as comfortable and as robust the Carrymore Sabre 45 might be, it has, and I'm ashamed to say, it took me 15 years to realise that that pack is now just too complicated and too fussy for my needs. So just a couple of examples for you guys and girls. On top of the Carrymore lid we have an elastic compression system and on the back of the pack we have a zippered pocket. On the underside of the lid for the Carrymore we have a zippered mesh pocket with a clip to keep your keys. On the front of the pack, we have a ladder loop system with, again, more bungees hanging off them. On the base of the pack, we have a couple of loops to keep a bedroll. Unfortunately, they're not big enough to keep my Savota. On the waist belt, we have a rope loop that I've never found a use for. I've tried carrying bottles in there, but they end up falling out. I suppose you could hang carabiners and stuff off there, but again, um, not necessary for me. On the internal of the carry more guys, we have not one, but two draw cord systems. One for cinching the inner baffle up. One for cinching the bag up and then we have a clip, an adjustable clip for cinching all that up. The pack has adjustments on top of adjustments and strap tidies here, there and everywhere. And again the rucksack is extremely comfortable to carry. But well, I'm looking for something more simplified and less complicated. And that ladies and gents is where the Savota 339 comes in. The Savota 339 is a classic externally framed rucksack from the 50s issued to the Finnish military. The design has remained largely unchanged until present day with only the strapping materials being updated to bring the pack up to a more contemporary state. Right folks, so let's go over some of the Rook's specs. So the pack comes in at a total weight of 1.9 kg. The external frame alone comes in at 650 grams. The main body of the pack is constructed from paraffin treated cotton. The Rook features three generously sized pockets mounted externally to the pack. The two side bottle pouches are big enough for your two litre Nalgene's and we have another larger size pocket on the base of the pack big enough for fire kits, saws, gloves, knives, things like that. The Savota 339 capacity comes in at around 40 litres and that is expandable to 55 litres using the lace cinch up system on the side. This is also a great place to store your axe. On the rear of the pack is the exposed tubular steel frame. We have some very well padded shoulder straps and a webbing belt which is adjustable for your comfort. Further down the pack we have a sternum strap which is the only snap buckle enclosure on the pack and again we have a seatbelt webbing style um, belt on the bottom for your comfort. This is adjustable by a rope pulley system. Now again guys and girls the Savota 339 is designed to be very very simple and the internal capacity of this pack is basically just one large dump pouch and to gain access to that all we're doing is undo the straps on the front and there you'll see we just have one large opening with a draw cord and that's how we gain access to the internals and just to reiterate the pack is treated with a paraffin coating which should mean that your gear inside should remain dry in moderate rain. Now my awesome friends the eagle eyed amongst you must have noticed by now that this pack does not support a hip belt. Now there are many mods online that allow you to attach your own hip belt if desired but this is how the pack was designed 
and this is how it will remain in my ownership. In my opinion, it doesn't really need a hip belt for the amount of gear you're going to be carrying in this pack anyway. Now, when it comes to adjustability of this pack, again, it is a very, very basic setup. Unfortunately, there is no on-the-fly adjustment for this pack. It is a case of set it and see. Now, that means if you set the straps up for comfort, wearing something like this, say a thin shirt or a thin layer, that's fine. But if you decide to put a thicker jacket on, you will need to reset the straps for the pack to fit you with that clothing. Although I will say the pack is very easy to mount and dismount just using these two shoulder clips here. You can push these up and that will remove the pack away from your back, allowing you to slip your arm in, moving the pack easily. And again, mounting the pack, simply sling it over your shoulder, slide your other arm through and tighten up your straps. Now, since I did purchase this pack off the used market from a very young fine fellow named Joe Jacob, thank you for the sale pal, and at a reduced price I might add, um, some of the adjustment parameters were actually changed when I got the pack and surprisingly, they suit me absolutely fine. Um, a lot of people who own this pack did have grumbles about the waist, about the uh, back support on the bottom of the pack being too springy and that could bounce off the back, but I think Joe has made some adjustment to that and it does sit on my back very, very comfortable. I spent a full day with this yesterday, fully loaded with all the gear I've got in it now, um, chancing about the woods, and I must say it is extremely comfortable, very comfortable to say it is a very, very basic pack indeed. I was expecting the pack to be swinging all about the hips, but surprisingly, it does stay located right in the middle of your back. Now, as beautiful and as stunning looking as the pack is, unfortunately, it's not perfect. No pack is, in my opinion. And this does have a few caveats, which we are going to go over now. Now, the first one, guys, being the lid on the main compartment of the pack. Now, that is definitely long enough, but in my opinion, it's not wide enough. And it is the opinion of many other users. Uh, problem being, if you do decide to stuff this pack to its capacity at 55 litres, um, when you put that lid back over your uh, opening, it is going to cover it lengthways, but you're going to struggle covering everything uh, widthways. So you may need to use a dry bag just to ensure everything stays dry in the pack. Second one, guys, and this isn't necessarily a deal break for me, although it has raised concerns from other users of the pack. And that is the bottle pockets on the side of the rook. Again, they are very simple in design and all it is is a cloth lid covering the main entrance to that pocket. There is no draw cord cinch up system and people are worried you may lose stuff or things are going to get wet in there. I say not an issue for me because these will be used mainly for bottles. Thirdly guys, and I will have to take the pack off to show you this one, but it is the zip on the main body of the pack. And here it is guys. So this is the zip they've implemented on the side of the pack. A um, couple of problems with this. One, it is not weatherproofed in any way, so water ingress is going to happen here. Um, don't get me wrong, it's a lovely zip. Very nice quality, snag free. Um, I don't see a real purpose for it to be honest I'm not sure whether this was on the actual original 1950s pack but maybe if you've got a couple of snacks in there you want to get to quick and ready like a, a lovely picnic or a maybe a pack of a uh, chocolino bites then yeah but for me um, this is pretty pointless I won't be using that um, as I will be using a dry bag or a, a bin liner in there to keep my stuff dry. So. But, ladies and gentlemen, at this moment in time, I am extremely happy with my new purchase. It offers a majority of things I was looking for, apart from the zip in a new pack with them old school classic looks. And it offers enough functionality to make it useful in its cause without all the fuss and complications of a modern day pack. Now, this pack is not going to suit everybody, and I totally understand that. And you yourself watching this might enjoy using a military pack as part of your bushcraft kit. What it all comes down to is personal taste and what you want from your kit. And my awesome friends, I'm going to leave the video there for today. I think I have covered pretty much everything I wanted to say about the bag in this video. I will be revisiting this video later on down the line, later in the year, just to give you guys an update on how the pack is faring. And if you would like to see a gear dump with a kit I have matched with this bag, then just let me know down in the comments and I will make that happen soon. Also, guys and girls, just before you leave, I don't often ask this, but if you did indeed enjoy today's content, please share it far and wide. And if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss future content like this. Right, you crazy peeps. Until the next one, you stay safe and as always, stay crafty. Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye. Go on, get out of here.